Hey, Sun here, I'm a privacy and security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. In last episode, I discussed why I ditched iCloud and I was essentially looking for alternatives uh, because I wanted end-to-end -end encryption. I wanted to use a technology that would make sure that my contacts are really mine, that they're not just laying on someone else's server for anyone to access. Um, and that's harder than it sounds because CalDAV and CardDAV the two protocols that most implementation use um, is just not designed for end-to-end -end encryption. And the same applies to email. Those are old protocols that were not designed with privacy in mind. Um, so, I mean, it's impossible, theoretically, to have end-to-end -end encryption in the context of CalDAV and CarDAV. There is no PGP or anything that applies to this. Um, so I looked into three alternatives. One was Radical. It's a way to self-host our own CalDAV and CardDAV, uh, you know, server, making sure that only us have access to this information. That said, this is very inconvenient for people who are not developers who or who do not wish to maintain that technology stack. And I'm trying to avoid self-hosting everything as much as possible because it does require a lot of attention. You need to patch it, stuff like this. So really there were two alternatives that I stumbled upon. And if you know of any others, please drop them down there in the description or in the comments, I should have said. Um, ProtonMail and Tutanota. Those two have implemented their own synchronization mechanisms to sync contacts and calendars. And for that, I am very thankful. That said, there are caveats and the one that just blew my mind, and I'm very upset about this, is that ProtonMail does not encrypt the most sensitive part, I believe, of contacts. So um, yeah, I initially imported contacts on ProtonMail and then noticed in the app that there were little locks, but not for the name or the main email address. And by mouse overing the lock, it said something about certain fields being encrypted, not others. So I went in the documentation and that's what I found. I found this article and by clicking on how to how your contacts are encrypted, it says black on white, your contacts, display names, and email addresses are encrypted at rest. As I mentioned in the last episode, that means they're encrypted on the servers of ProtonMail, but are not secured by zero access encryption, which is another way of saying end-to-end -end encryption. This means ProtonMail can access this information. I really wish that when importing contacts, and this happens here, if you go into contacts, uh, you can say add contact or import. So when you say import, nowhere here does it say that this will leak our social graph. So when Edward Snowden, you know, leaked a whole bunch of documents, what he also mentioned is that the NSA and other tree letter agencies don't need to be able to decipher the content of all communications or store them for that matter, although they likely are. Um, they only need the metadata. And the reason for that is who we interact with, our social graph, is one of the most sensitive pieces of information that exists about us. And it makes me ridiculously upset that ProtonMail would not disclose this more. Uh, full disclosure, I did end up using ProtonMail, more on this in a future episode, but I am not using contacts. So yeah, it, it's, it's really scary. I'm sure Tutanova is doing better on this, but I haven't dug into it. If you know, let me know in the comments. Um, but essentially, there is one feature that you need to be aware of if you're a ProtonMail user and you don't want to upload all of your contacts uh, to ProtonMail servers. If you click here on the contacts, you go to settings, you want to make sure that automatically save contacts is disabled, and you also want to make sure you never import all your contacts to ProtonMail. Now, the sad part about this is I really liked this um, feature, conceptually speaking, it was very convenient. I recently switched to Android slash Graphene OS. Um, at least I'm playing with it right now and it is a great experience so far, but that does not have a way to synchronize contacts. And even if it did, it would likely be CalDAV or CardDAV. Uh, I should have said CardDAV in the case of contacts. <laughs> and, and that's not end-to-end -end encrypted as well. So that would have forced me to use Radical uh, so I was really hoping ProtonMail did that well, and I could use that to sync contacts between my, my Mac, you know, in the browser and my phone, but that's not possible because it's not end-to-end -end encrypted. So I want to make sure that I got that out there. 
Um, and yeah, so, you know, smash that like button if you like this kind of content. Please subscribe, hit the bell notification. There's gonna be a lot more content coming your way about Cardav and Caldav and about the setup that I ended up choosing. So yeah, I'll see you soon, bye.